While cancer has always seemed to exist since the dawn of humanity, it seems to have elevated itself in terms of frequency to a concerning level these days. And I was recently shocked to hear that there's an ingredient in bedding that I may have had in my bed that can potentially be listed as a carcinogen. But in addition, there are seven other items that I had recently found in some research that are known carcinogens that I found I had 80% of in my own apartment. So in this video, I thought I would share some of those household items that I've seen to potentially increase cancer risk. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book Master of the Day. So let's jump in. Now, first and foremost, what do these household objects have to do with traditional Chinese medicine? Well, here's the link. Because while yes, ancient people had cancer and there are references to it going back to the BC era from other physicians, all over the world. But the difference is that in ancient times, they didn't have thousands of known carcinogens that they were being exposed to on a daily basis. And yes, even certain plants and chemical compounds that exist in nature are carcinogenic or cause harm to human beings, it was nothing like what we have to worry about today. We have endocrine disruptors in plastic, in water. I mean, we're consuming pharmaceuticals and birth control pills and opioids in our water supply. I mean, our entire environment in a way is exposing us to chemicals that we've never been exposed to for literally thousands of years. And at such quantities, in such combination, the air, the water, the food, and even the packaging for most of our things can potentially be carcinogens. So what do we do? Household object number one is actually mattresses, unfortunately. There are manufacturers that often add flame retardants to furnishings, basically to slow the spread of potential fires, meaning that many mattresses are actually coated in those exact same materials as a preventative, but that are known carcinogens. The National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences states that prolonged exposure to flame retardants can lead to different types of cancer, reproductive harm, and can even affect childhood development. Object Object number two, or I should say chemical compound number two, is called benzene, and it's in lots of different household objects and items. So for example, benzene is often popping up in rubber cement, adhesives, degreasers. They're things that you probably would have like under your kitchen sink or even in your garage. So it's one of those things that's a known human carcinogen. Third household object or item that you may have is actually glyphosate. So this one has been hotly debated because obviously Monsanto and lots of companies would not like you to know that this is a known carcinogen, but this is recently added in around 2015 and the International Agency on Research for Cancer deemed this to be a known carcinogen. And that's a pretty big deal for them to do that. Because again, for a lot of these companies and a lot of these items, unless there's really clear evidence that it's a carcinogen, they often stay away. Again, they're always trying to play political favor games with businesses and other other agencies, but for them to say that was a big deal. Glyphosate is an herbicide and it can be found in a huge percentage of Americans' garages. And it's one of the most commonly used herbicides in agriculture. And it could be in or on most of the foods that you buy that aren't organic. Now I know after hearing glyphosate, you might be wondering, are some of my symptoms a result of, for example, pesticide exposure? Well, I've actually put together a free quiz here, which will help you figure out the root cause of your symptoms from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view. The way that we describe the organ systems and clusters of symptoms symptoms is very unique and very holistic, very different from something in conventional medicine. And the first link below this video is for a free quiz I've put together. It's like a 10 to 12 page, super actionable document. You could rate and score your symptoms, see which organ network as we call them, it most likely relates to. And then from there, we actually have linked to every single one of our videos that can help you for free, basically address some of those symptoms. So I would recommend checking that out. Now, household object number four or chemical is formaldehyde. So formaldehyde is actually in plywood, it's in fabric, fabrics and it's in a lot more. It's used in many different household products, but studies in lab rats and people who are around formaldehyde at their jobs shows it can cause cancer. So pretty clear. Object number five, I hate to say it for the smokers, but air fresheners. So certain aerosol and plug-in air fresheners have compounds that create these fragrances that have been put together. And those scents linger in the air for a long period of time as a result of some of the compounding of whatever's put into the air fresheners. Many of them contain what's called VOCs or volatile organic compounds. They include formaldehyde, what we mentioned earlier, benzene, and several other VOCs, which have been linked to different kinds of cancer or even neurological issues. Object number six that may be at home is nonstick cookware. I know Teflon was this huge scientific revelation when it came out, but Teflon is not something you should be cooking with. Teflon coated pans, they make cooking easier, but they release certain chemicals when heated at higher temperatures. So unfortunately, sometimes I've seen friends Teflon pans and they've scraped them by using metal spatulas and you can see all the scraping of the Teflon that's come off and without a doubt, 
they are eating that Teflon. When you see what Teflon is known to cause or known to potentially cause, you don't want to do that. Household object number seven is unfortunately candles. I remember reading a really interesting research paper. I think it's called Hige Culture up in Scandinavia. And they talked about making your home so comfy and your home so cozy and making it feel really warm and friendly. But then they said that the number of candles being burned inside in some Scandinavian countries is a known potential carcinogen. That the compounds being released from burning the candles has documented health risks. And so if you're in the winter for days, weeks, months, and you're burning lots of candles, you're being exposed to these chemicals every single day. In one particular paper, they found that burning candles releases chemicals, one of them including benzene that we talked to before, which has been connected to cancer. So trying to use substitutes like beeswax candles, for example, is something that is much, much safer. Now, object number eight, that's a household object for a lot of people, is plastic Tupperware. Do you remember the whole thing about Nalgene five or 10 years ago about it having BPA? That led to a lot of this whole community outrage about all these health food stores and camping stores that were selling these plastic Nalgenes that were high in BPA once the literature came out about it's being leached into water, for example. Plastic food storage containers may contain BPA and phthalates, both of which are known carcinogens. So going for glass or stainless steel containers, especially if you're also going to be reheating those at a temperature. So those are eight household objects or compounds found in lots of household objects. This is a different time we live in, right? We have this era of abundance where we have so many amenities that our ancient ancestors didn't have, but sometimes with varying kinds of technologies, whether the technology is plastic or it is a candle that smells like apple cinnamon, every technology provides us something beneficial and sometimes produces a downstream effect that takes us years, if not decades, to sort of decipher. Be very careful about the things you stock at home and again, if you guys wanna work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I see a limited number of new patients every single month in my clinic in Los Angeles, or virtually via telemedicine, and have a related video on this topic right up here.